Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Missouri Students, sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at moacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, moacac.org. Now, I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Good evening, everyone. Guys, we are super excited to be talking to you guys today about A+ and everything that it has to offer. So yeah, like she said, if you guys have questions, feel free to leave those in the Q&A question box and we will be sure to get those at the very end. So without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce your panelists. So my name is Mackenzie and I work at Ozarks Technical Community College and I am an admissions representative. So basically my job is to work with students with the admissions process. I help everyone with financial aid, academic advising, and a little bit of everything else. So that's just a little bit about me, and I will go ahead and hand it over to Megan. Hello, thank you guys for joining us. My name is Megan Struberg. I'm the Director of Early College Programs at East Central College. We're located in Union, Missouri, which is about 50 miles southwest of St. Louis. I also work um, with the admissions staff very closely, so um, I'm your girl. Christy? All right. And I'm Christy Chapman. I work at Crowder College in Neosho, Missouri, and my job is similar to Megan and McKenzie in that I'm here to help you have a stress-free, as stress-free as possible, admissions to enrollment process. Awesome. So guys, this is just kind of an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Basically, some general frequently asked questions that as it pertains to A+. So if you're in high school and you have questions about A+, we'll talk about some of that stuff. And then after you graduate, just kind of questions that you would have during that time as well. So what is A+, exactly? Well, it is a state-funded scholarship for eligible high school students. So in order to be eligible, you have to meet a series of different requirements while you're in high school. And then after you graduate, you have to attend a community college or a vocational and technical school. And A plus is intended to pay for an entire associate's degree or certificate, which is absolutely amazing. It really creates a great opportunity for students to help pay for their education. So what exactly does it cover? Well, it covers your tuition and common fees. Now, um, these common fees are students or are fees that every student has to pay regardless of what their program is. So this can be registration fees, security fees, and different things like that. Now, what does it not cover? It does not cover books or class or program specific fees. So if you are interested in taking a science class or an online class, because you chose to take those specific classes, um, those fees are not included with the cost of A+. Now, let's pause for a second and really talk about um, one of the most important questions is why students should complete A+, while they're in high school. So first and foremost, uh, let's be real guys, college is expensive. And um, I graduated in 2019, last May, so I am very aware of how expensive college can be. Now, A plus really creates a great opportunity for students um, to have free tuition for the associate's degree and a certificate, which is amazing. Now, we mentioned before that A plus does not cover the cost of books or the extra program specific fees, but the good news is, is that a lot of schools, including the ones that are um, represented here today, offer different scholarships specifically for A plus students to help pay for these additional costs. So if you apply for the different scholarships and if you um, make it work for you, you can potentially go to school for those first two years for free. 
which is amazing. And then last but not least, um, students who attend community college are actually more likely to succeed in receiving a bachelor's degree after they transfer, after receiving their associate's degree. So typically, it's about 70% of those that transfer will receive their bachelor's, whereas those that will go for their four years um, or they go straight to university, it's about 58 or 59% that they would actually um, succeed in getting their bachelor's degree. So if you are interested in A+, and after you graduate high school, um, you're wanting to use it, these are the steps that you have to complete in order to use your A+. So um, you will have to enroll and attend full time. So what this looks like, it's 12 credit hours for a fall or spring semester, and that's about four classes um, because a, an average class is about three credit hours. Now, if you're wanting to go in the summer, it's gonna be about six credit hours um, in order to use your A plus or two classes. You will need to be degree seeking or seeking a certificate. The reason for this is that they just don't want you guys to be taking classes willy nilly. They want to make sure that there is a plan when using your A plus funds. You'll also have to complete the FAFSA each year. And the FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So basically, it's your ticket for all things financial aid. Next, you'll need to provide an official copy of your high school transcript. So after you graduate, um, your transcript will be um, marked with the A-plus seal. And that seal is the proof that we need in order to award you your A-plus. And then last but not least, you'll need to achieve a 2.0 GPA your first semester of college. Now, if you guys have um, questions about the A plus eligibility on the high school side, I really recommend that you reach out to your high school counselor. They're going to be a really great resource for you. Um, but if you have further questions about the high school side and also um, the college side, you can feel free to check out that link um, provided there. So once you use your A plus your first semester and you want to continue to use it, these are the steps that you have to complete. So um, first, you'll notice that the GPA that you need for your first semester is a 2.0. And after that, it's a 2.5. And you'll also have to maintain satisfactory academic progress. So what does that mean? Basically, as long as you go to class, you stay in your class, and you pass your class, you're gonna be in good shape. You'll also need to complete the FAFSA every academic year and then maintain full-time status. So it's pretty simple. Um, and these are just the different steps that you would have to do um, each semester. All right, so now I will pass the torch off to Megan. All right, so go to class, <laughs> stay in class, pass your class. Those are the three things you gotta do in college. Um, so when does your A plus expire? Um, a plus actually gives you 48 months after your graduation date to finish your, or to use your A plus funding. So if you have to work for some reason right after high school graduation, um, you know, you do have a little bit more time to do that. Some students go into the military, um, you know, and some students just take a little bit longer to finish. You know, they might not be able to go full time because they have to do something else to kind of support themselves while they're in school. So know that you do have 48 months, which is about four years after high school graduation that date on your transcript to use it. Um, it also will expire when you receive an associate's degree. A plus is truly designed for those first two years. And so um, definitely keep that in mind. Another rule for A plus, and you'll see this in all of the website information and even in your high school guidance counselor packets from your A plus coordinator, um, the completion of 105% of the hours um, is basically where the cutoff is. And so when you think about your program, you obviously want to pass every single class that you're in and, you know, keep everything. But if for some reason it takes you just a little bit longer, you have to drop a class, they give you 105% of what it takes to finish your degree to use your A+. Um, with that being said, um, hours earned for work performed during high school, or I'm sorry, performed before high school graduation, including but not limited to dual credit, dual enrollment, technical education, advanced placement in the International uh, Baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. All right, next slide. <clears throat> okay, 
So can A plus be transferred? So if for some reason you decide to transfer schools, if you are attending, let's say, East Central College and you decide that you want to go to Ozarks Technical College because you want to live in Springfield and kind of be in a different um, type of environment, you can transfer. Um, but you have to contact, um, the acronym is MDUDE, but it's the Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. So that's kind of a mouthful. Um, but you definitely need to call them and make sure that all of your uh, benefits are in line for A-plus to transfer to that other school. What you don't want to happen is to just change schools and not notify the financial aid office and MDUDE. Otherwise, your benefits may not be able to be used at that other school or they might reduce the total amount you receive under the scholarship. So very important to kind of stay in communication with them. Next slide. Okay, um, the other um, question we kind of wanted to address for all of our schools is how do different schools handle payment plans? Um, Christy, do you want to talk about Crowder first? Yeah, so each school handles um, the payment plans differently. So you always want to be aware of how to set up the payment plan. So at Crowder specifically, as an A-plus student, as a Crowder A-plus student, you actually don't have to set up a specific payment plan because the A-plus does count as your payment plan. You do have to have a FAFSA on file, and that's a state requirement that every school that you use A-plus at, you do have to have your FAFSA on file. But yeah, at Crowder, the payment plan, your A-plus will count as your payment plan. And then at Ozarks Technical Community College, it works a little bit differently. Um, so every student, regardless of if they're paying out of pocket or um, they're using A plus or Pell Grant or anything like that, every student has to complete a payment plan the same day that they register. So the reason for this is so that um, it locks the students in their class. Um, but a lot of students kind of freak out about it, but we always reassure them that they don't have to pay anything that day. It is just more as a precaution and a, um, a backup plan, so to speak. And East Central actually does it similar to Crowder College's A plus is considered your payment plan. So that's what holds you in classes. Then after A plus pays, then you'll have the bill for those extra fees. Like if let's say you're a culinary arts major and you had to buy a knife kit, that would be something you'd have to pay out of pocket. Excellent. All right, so for students that are earning college credit while you are in high school, that's considered dual credit, dual enrollment, but when you are paying to receive that college credit and you're receiving both college and high school credit, that's dual credit. So how does that work with A+. First off, dual credit is a great opportunity. It does give you that jump start and your dual credit will transfer to any school that you want to attend. So when you graduate and now you're ready to pursue your associate degree at a college like OTC or East Central or Crowder, your dual credit count, your dual credit hours do count towards your degree and plan of study. So for example, you're going for teacher education and you took dual credit English, dual credit math and dual credit history. Those classes will count as check marks on your degree plan. What's great is they don't count as hours towards your A-plus timeline. And when I say A-plus timeline, the way I'm defining that is that 48-month timeline that Megan spoke of. So you have 48 months of A-plus eligibility to use your A-plus. So those dual credit hours, it's kind of confusing, but they count towards your degree, towards that degree completion, but not towards that A-plus eligibility. So in a sense, dual credit extends the life of your A-plus, if you will, because you can take some extra classes that A-plus will pay for because you're already transferring in nine credit hours or 12 credit hours of dual credit. So it gives you the opportunity to take some extra classes and A-plus will pay for them. So maybe you want to take extra classes towards your bachelor's degree or maybe pursue two different degrees, teacher education and a psychology degree you can take some extra classes and A-plus will pay for them. So it's a good thing. Okay, this one is exciting. Good opportunity for everyone. So you're an A-plus student and you are excited for summer and you wanna take classes because you wanna make summer count. The best way I can describe this is as an example. So for my seniors, for all of our seniors graduating 2021, this first semester, 
out of high school, so you just graduated, you have your A-plus eligibility that you can use as long as you enroll in six credit hours, and you can use your A-plus even if you are planning to attend a university in the fall. So right now, you might be thinking, I have my A-plus, but my heart is set on going to this four-year university because I have a wrestling scholarship, a swimming scholarship, or I want, you know, I got accepted to Florida University, whatever it may be. That very first summer that you graduate high school, you can use your A-plus benefits. The catch to this is you do have to be enrolled in six hours and you have to complete the correct FAFSA. So remember, um, Megan and McKenzie, I think both mentioned, to be A-plus eligible, you do have to complete a FAFSA. Again, that's just the state, federal government, that's just the requirements. Now, after that initial summer, you go to the university, and then you decide, oh, I'm still at my university, but I want to come and take some more summer classes and you is, use A+. Plus. You unfortunately cannot because you're considered a visiting student. And that's defined as a student that's still degree seeking at a university and they're just visiting for the summer. They just finished their first year. So I know that can be confusing, but we want to make sure everyone understands that that initial summer after high school graduation, you have the opportunity regardless of where you're going in the fall to use your A+. Now, if you are planning to pursue a degree at a community college or trade school, you can use your A+, in the summer anytime because you're degree seeking at a community college or a trade school. So A+, in summer, it gives you an opportunity to take some classes and A+, will pay for it. Really, really great option. All right, this is a very common question. So what is the difference between the state-funded A-plus scholarship and university A-plus scholarships? And I want to be as clear, so please, again, if you have questions, definitely ask questions on this because we all hear students say, well, I'm going to use my A-plus at the university. And that's actually not correct because the state-funded A-plus scholarship is funded through the state of Missouri. and the true A plus covers 105% of your tuition and common fees, meaning you can complete an associate degree or certificate for almost free. And I say almost free because remember Megan mentioned, you might have that knife kit that you have to pay for. So A plus isn't gonna pay for that culinary arts, you know, the extra fees, or maybe you get accepted to a nursing program and you have some scrubs that you have to pay for. A plus doesn't pay for the extras, but it covers 105% of your tuition and common fees. The universities, they do offer, some do, not all of them, but different universities will offer an A-plus scholarship. That is a privately funded scholarship through the university. It is not funded through the state, and it is a limited amount. So for example, you might say, oh, well, I have an A-plus scholarship at the university. That's only a $500 amount, so it's a limited amount. Some of them might vary, but for the most part, I feel like they're $500 a semester. And what you have to do is you have to look at how much is that university gonna cost you? The tuition and the fees, that $500 scholarship, you did earn that by completing your A+, but again, it is a privately funded scholarship through the university. It is not through the state, and it's only gonna cover a fraction, a small fraction of your tuition and fees, if even one class but the true A plus that you can use at East Central, OTC, Crowder, and other community colleges covers your entire 105% of your tuition and fees. So it is an amazing opportunity to complete your degree with little to no debt. That is what our goal is for you, that we can provide you an affordable education and using A plus is an amazing opportunity. And I think now we're wrapping it up for questions. Um, I know we have overwhelmed you with information because with A+, the simple of A+, is that it's an amazing opportunity. You can complete a certificate or an associate's degree, 105% of your tuition fees covered. So again, we don't want you to have to graduate with this excessive debt or to take out excessive student loans. So the simple of A+, is free college. Think of it like that. You can find scholarships, savings to pay for the rest, but the information is overwhelming and there are so many different things to know, but that is why you have advisors and recruiters and 
representatives like Megan, McKenzie, and myself, we are here to help you. We want this to be an exciting time for you. It's going to be a little stressful. It's going to be a little frustrating because there's so much to know, but we are here to help you through this. That's why we want questions and want to be here. But we're proud of everyone for doing A+, because truly it will only open doors for you and opportunities. It is an amazing, amazing program. We've got some questions rolling in. Um, so let me start at the top and then we'll, we'll address these one by one. Um, so if I get my associates with A+, with a plus, can I go to a different school for my bachelor's degree? Do any of you want to take that? Yes. Let me read it again. If I go to a... So oh, sure. If, you, if I get my associates with A+, plus, can I go to a different school for my bachelor's degree? Yes, you absolutely can. I wanted to make sure I answered it correct because sure. once you use your A+, plus, it's only at the community college. So you complete your associate degree but absolutely, then you can go and transfer to a bachelor's degree. We are all accredited. So the classes, the important thing to know is your first two years of college, let's say again, you're going for teacher education, you're going for journalism, you're going for um, a history major, whatever it can be, you have to do what we all call the 42 core, math, science, English, history, that's not a punishment that Crowder or East Central or OTC is giving you. That's a accreditation requirement. You can complete that with your A+, get it paid for, and then transfer to pursue your bachelor's. No problem. We are accredited. They will take our classes. No problem at all. Oh. Um, can, can you use your A+, if you reverse transfer back to a community college? And so I think I'm understanding that question correctly. So if you go to a four-year school, and you decide, gosh, this isn't for me, can I come back to a community college and use my A-plus funding? That one, I wasn't sure um, if you guys had inside knowledge of that. I think that you can. We might have to come back with you. Um, I won't say your name publicly unless you guys know that answer that for sure. So this one, I can kind of answer it a little bit. This one, can be kind of tricky and I think it's changed recently. It used to be that no, you couldn't, but I think that it recently has changed that as long as you still meet the general requirements, as long as it hasn't been four years since you graduated high school and you still haven't, or you haven't gone beyond the 105% um, that you should be able to. Um, but if you are thinking about doing that in the future, um, talk to your financial aid counselors because things are constantly changing, um, that they are going to have a better feel for that current time, what those procedures are going to look like. And I just wanna um, add to that and say, yes, I actually just checked on this today for a student. Um, who currently started at a university in Iowa on a football scholarship. And he talked to me today and said, I have A+. Plus. I want to come back to Missouri. I want to come back and finish my associate. It's cost so much to go here. And so I checked with the A+, plus coordinator. And um, yes, so you go that first, first semester at the university and you think, you know, this just isn't quite for me. You can absolutely still use your A+. Plus. Like McKinsey said, as long as you're within that timeline of eligibility, mm -hmm. yes. Come back and transfer and you can use A+. Plus. Awesome. I think Mackenzie brought up a good point about A+, plus is, you know, falls under financial aid. So you have to remember, too, financial aid is kind of government funding knowledge. So a lot of times when you hear from admissions representatives, they might have more about college knowledge and programs and all of that. But if you have a very specific question, a specific circumstance, like what happens if my family situation is this or that, Definitely the financial aid office is always the best one to verify those individual situations with. Um, and this might be one of those questions. Um, tell me if you guys know the answer to this one. Um, the question came in, does the state funded or state funding cover foster children or any scholarship cover it? And what about emancipation? Okay. I, I kind of have an answer for this. Okay. So um, whenever you fill out the FAFSA, and we mentioned the FAFSA earlier, so the free application for federal student aid. So there is a question on there that asked about dependency. And typically, or pretty much, if you are um, younger than 24, if you have different circumstances like you mentioned, then most likely you would be eligible for Pell Grants, um, which, as of right now, it's about 3,000 
100 and some odd change for one semester. So if you go to a community college, um, the great thing about community college, even if you don't have a lot of scholarships or anything like that, it is super affordable. So your Pell Grants or financial aid will go a lot further than if you went to a state school or private university. Um, so that full amount from the Pell Grant should cover the majority of your cost going to a community college. So a plus, I mean, if you have a plus, then there's that. But as far as um, like foster care or emancipation and stuff like that, Pell Grant is probably going to be um, the thing that I would focus on for that. Okay. Um, next question is, can you or not use A plus in another state? Um, a plus is only for Missouri. So other states might have programs, they might call it something different, but this specific program is just for, I uh, almost said East Central, <laughs> sorry, for a community college. Uh, situation in Missouri. Yes. All right. Next question. Um, to use A plus in the summer, do you feel do you fill out the same FAFSA for the one you fill out for the fall semester that won't open until this October? Or do you fill out the current FAFSA for the 2021 year? You I am so proud of whoever asked that question because you've been doing your homework. It can be very confusing. And I like to use my hands, so I'm gonna bring them up to the screen. So just like you fill out a FAFSA or a, your taxes every year, you fill out a FAFSA for every year. And that FAFSA works for fall, spring, and summer. So you're right, you're actually, if you're planning to go the summer after you graduate high school, so this summer, you're actually hitting that very tail end of the previous year's FAFSA. So you're actually gonna complete two FAFSAs. Because starting fall 2021, you are right. In October, you can use your 2019 taxes and you're going to fill out the 2021, 2022 FAFSA. But if you think, I want to take those summer classes and get a head start, absolutely, that's a great idea. You're going to use your 2018 taxes to fill out the 2021 or 2020, 2021 FAFSA. Even when I say it, it sounds overwhelming because it's a lot of numbers. But again, remember, you have us as your resources. You can ask us questions. We are here to help you through it. But just keep in mind, it is so important to use A+. Plus. You have to fill out the FAFSA. And if you go in the summer, you're going to end up filling out two FAFSAs. So that way they can verify you for A+. Plus. Great question. Okay, next question. Uh, my son is in the 10th grade. Should we get his high school info now or junior year? Um, I'm not, I think I understand this question. Um, I'm guessing you're asking if we should check on doing A plus now. Is that how you guys are interpreting the question? I think so. The okay. Check on with your high school. Yeah. yeah. So I would say it's never too early to do that, to check with your high school counselor, A plus coordinator, and what the requirements are. Um, obviously, GPA falls into that, um, volunteer service hours. So all of those things would play into eligibility. And also, I think you have to, um, I think, I know, I say I think, but at the high school level, you do have to have that good attendance, and I believe that does count for all four years. So absolutely, if you have a freshman, a sophomore, junior, and even the seniors that are like, I didn't sign up, ask your counselor, can I still sign up? Ask the questions, because you do have to meet certain requirements at the high school level. Get that seal, like Mackenzie mentioned, you're going to get that seal on your transcript. And then at the college level, it's a different set of requirements to keep that eligibility. Yeah, I do have something to add with the attendance that you mentioned. Um, for example, my brother is in the ninth grade and he was going on a camping trip, but because he's wanting to try and get A, plus, he had to take that into consideration. So the attendance does start from ninth grade and goes all the way to 12th grade. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. Um, oh, someone was asking, uh, Mackenzie, would you be able to share the slide with the A plus uh, requirements on it again? They came in a little bit late and they missed that one. So we could just kind of leave that up. Yeah, um, absolutely. Give me okay. just a second to go back sure. and find it. No problem. Um, while Mackenzie's doing that, we'll go on to the next one. Um, what year in high school do we start or sign up for A plus? Um, actually, that kind of goes back to the same question we just answered about you know, please make sure you sign up as early as possible as your attendance can affect that. And there might be some other things that the coordinator wants you to be aware of. Um, the question after that, so if I complete a program like an RN for nursing, 
can I then transfer to a university and that program would come with me when I transfer? Do you want to answer yes. that one, Christy? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, and I'm, I just asked the girls before we started, but Megan, McKinsey, um, East Central and OTC both have nursing programs, correct? Yes. Yeah. And so does Crowder. So this is something important to know. If your goal is to become a nurse, a registered nurse, so you have your CNA, Certified Nursing Assistant, LPN, and your RN degrees. And regardless, if you are pursuing an associate degree, which is what you pursue at a community college, that associate degree in nursing, or if you would start at a university and pursue their nursing program, it's a bachelor's degree. Both tracks lead you to become a registered nurse. So both the associate and bachelor tracks lead you to take the NCLEX and national boards. And the reason I say that for the question is you would graduate, if you have A plus, it is an amazing opportunity because you can have A plus cover the entire nursing program, the common fees and the tuition. You, like I said, might have to pay the extra labs, yes, or get scholarships, but that RN degree, then if you decide you wanna go for a bachelor's, you can. If you decide you want to go for a master's, you can. And yes, the RN degree will go with you. Um, but absolutely, it's a great opportunity because you will be a registered nurse. And I know in our Southwest Missouri area, um, you know, and closer to Union, St. Louis, Columbia, they might, you know, want that bachelor's degree eventually. But as a registered nurse, you are a registered nurse, whether it's an associate or bachelor's degree. The benefit to an associate is you have very little to no debt and so you have more opportunities financially you just don't have that stress with you i hope that answered your question sometimes i get really excited and just like to keep talking but <laughs> yeah can yeah. pursue another program but you will be a working nurse you will be a registered nurse after you complete a program at the community college and we can't see your faces guys so if we misinterpret any question that you have just type it again and we'll get get to that um and let's see the next one. Oh, um, Christy, you were talking about how to use summer um, A plus yeah. after graduation, but before you go to a four year school, they asked, could you re-explain yes. just that piece again? Absolutely. And honestly, the simple way to put it is if you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna use my A plus, go ahead, submit an application to the community college where you wanna use your A plus. You will send your high school transcripts to that community college. Because again, we have to verify you've got the A plus seal, you met those high school requirements, and then you'll fill out the FAFSA. And I emphasize this again because there have been students that don't fill it out and we can't certify you for A plus. So you have to fill out the FAFSA. Again, we will contact you, we are here for you. But you have to check your email and your phone so we can always update you. So honestly, how to use your um, A plus the summer before you go to that university? apply to the college, send us your high school transcript, complete your FAFSA, and then enroll in the classes. And you'll sign A plus agreements and do all that once you're getting enrolled. But the start of it is just submitting that application and getting enrolled in the classes. Yeah. Okay. And I think I skipped over this question before, but someone asked, um, can you get certified for A plus after you go to college? Like, let's say you didn't quite make the GPA cutoff. Um, I believe the answer would be no on that because the high school has to certify you for that. And so basically, as Christy mentioned, when we get your final high school transcript, the two things we would look for would be the A plus seal and your graduation mm -hmm. date. And so those are the two things that will get you that A plus funding. Let's see. Um, the next one they asked about um, if we can use A plus in a different state. Again, it's only a Missouri program. Other states might have similar programs. I know Tennessee has quite a few, um, but a plus is just for Missouri. Um, Mackenzie, do you want to answer this one? It's um, how can A plus work with other financial aid resources like the Pell Grant, I think would be a good. Yeah, idea. absolutely. Yeah, guys, that is actually a really great question. Um, and it can be kind of difficult. So it's one of those that if I don't explain it in a way that makes sense, um, go ahead and ask it again. And we'll try and explain it again later um, in a way that hopefully makes sense. But I'll do my best. Okay. So um, as far as A plus with other scholarships, I'll start there. Typically, the scholarships are stackable with it. So um, that's, yeah, that's a good way of putting it is that you can use your A plus and then any additional scholarships can just be added onto it. So 
that process is really easy. Now, where it gets kind of tricky is any time you incorporate federal aid. So we keep mentioning the FAFSA. So um, the Pell Grants is a direct, um, oh goodness, what is the word? Um, based off of your financial eligibility on the FAFSA, you could be eligible for a Pell Grant, which is just federal funding that goes um, to the school straight to you. So um, federal aid and state aid sometimes work um, differently with each other. So federal aid will always be paid out first and state aid will come in second. So if you have a Pell Grant that pays for everything, awesome, you are good to go. Um, and that's pretty much taken care of. Where it gets kind of tricky is if you have a partial Pell Grant. So um, let me kind of explain it this way and we'll see if it makes sense. So if you have a semester total cost that is $2,000. So say your Pell Grant covers 1,000 of it. And then after that, you have um, a remainder of 1,000. So say A plus covers the next 500 because um, that's the remaining of the tuition and common fees and stuff like that. So because A plus does not cover the cost of books, which often are bought last, um, then you would be responsible for whatever is left over. So I know that can be kind of confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, Megan, Christy, if you guys have, er, have any ideas how to add on to that, feel free to do so. Um, yeah, because I know it can be kind of confusing. It can be. The only thing I wanted to add and just emphasize is, as Mackenzie said, absolutely right, the federal aid gets applied first, and then your state aid gets applied. And the federal aid is that FAFSA Pell Grant money, and the state is the A+. And that is a requirement all of us have to follow. It is not a matter of, oh, we wish, I mean, we wish we could do that. It is a matter of that, but it's not a matter of us, uh, the college, choosing to apply that first. The federal government requires you apply federal aid first and then your state aid, which is your A plus. A plus is state because it's only in the state of Missouri. Um, next question, and you'll have to tell me if you guys know this or we might have to circle back to this person afterward. It might be more of a VA representative question. Um, if you plan to be in the military during college, can you still use A plus? Yeah, so this is kind of, a lot of it depends. So if you're planning on going active um, and you're planning on serving for several years, um, you would have to be careful because your A plus might expire. That'd probably be the thing that I would be most concerned about. But if you were serving, say in the National Guard or in the reserve, you 100% would still be able to use your A plus. So the biggest thing, the military wouldn't hinder you from using your A plus. The only thing that might stop you is um, waiting too long to let your A plus expire, if that makes sense. And I think, frankly, the military might provide you more funding um, than A plus, yes. depending on what chapter that they're that it's falling under. So if you have specific yes. questions, um, depending what branch you're in and what all those funding structures are, there is always a veterans um, representative in every financial aid office. And so always reach out to that person. All right, next question. Um, do you fill out a FAFSA all years of college or, uh, or high school or both? And is it necessary to fill out a FAFSA in freshman year of high school? So the answer is you have to fill it out every year. <laughs> so yeah. yay, you win the prize. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that we mentioned the date, but if you wanna put October 1st on your calendar, um, those of you that are in the class of 2021, October 1st is the first day you can fill out the FAFSA for next year. Um, again, if you're attending summer, you'll have to do the 2021 FAFSA and the one that starts October 1st, the 21-22 FAFSA. Um, mm -hmm. And you really do not need to fill out a FAFSA your freshman year of high school because really no. it's not going to tell you much. Um, you can fill it out, but you don't really have a good basis off of you're not looking at the right tax returns. You know, you're going to be looking at that down the road whenever you're a senior. So um, I don't know if there's a benefit to doing it early. There's a lot of tools out there where you can estimate. Um, I, yeah, I don't, it wouldn't be worth your time to do early because it's something that you'll need when you're enrolling at the college level. So you're good. You don't have to worry about it yet. So that's a good thing. 
<laughs> it's good to be familiar with it. Um, next question, what is, um, they were asking, what is the FAFSA? So I think it's hard to say, and sometimes yes. that makes it harder even to yeah. think about. Yeah. So I don't know why they call it this, but the FAFSA, it's F-A-F-S-A, -S -S in case you're wondering. So Frank, Apple, Frank, Sam, Apple, <laughs> FAFSA, um, <laughs> because they were asking, like, I don't think I spelled that right. Um, it stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And so I think, honestly, the FAFSA, the hardest part about it is just saying it. You know, if you uh -huh. work with someone that knows what they're doing, you can finish the FAFSA in about 20 minutes. So don't let, you know, horror stories from people that have done it in the past, you know, sway you. Because really, if you have someone trusted at your high school or in your college that you're applying to, they know what they're doing and they'll help you through that process. So don't let that stress you out. And just to emphasize, I know we keep saying free, but it is an application that you'll complete with your personal taxes, your parents' taxes, and it is a free application. It does not cost you anything to fill it out. Unfortunately, I have had students that have gone online and they've typed in FAFSA and they've been directed towards a service that asks you to pay money to complete the FAFSA. And those are a, a scam in the sense that they're just going to go fill out your FAFSA for free. So eventually it'll get filled out, but if anyone ever tries to charge you to complete your FAFSA, do not X out. It is a government site, so it's FAFSA.gov, and it is a free application that doesn't cost anything. And like we mentioned, the federal aid, it determines your eligibility. So it determines your Pell Grant eligibility. That's free money that you get to go to school. It determines your loan eligibility, which you've probably all heard horror stories of a student loan. Good news, we all work at community colleges, and even if you had to take out a loan, it is manageable debt. Sounds cheesy, but it's true. You will not have excessive $30,000 your first semester debt. No way. It'll be affordable. And work study. So a lot of students say, hey, can I work on campus? That is all determined through that FAFSA. And I say it wrong all the time because it's so hard. But I just wanted to emphasize because I have unfortunately had students that have paid for it to be completed. And we did eventually receive it, but I don't know why those sites still are out there, but it is free. It is a free, free, free application. And there are, like Megan mentioned, resources to help you fill it out. Uh, we have people to help you. Okay, we've got several questions left. We've got about three minutes, so we're going to do lightning round really quick. What GPA do you need to have to keep your A+. Plus? So to keep it, it would be a 2.5. Okay. Now in high school, I think it's also a 2.5, but I'm not sure what the minimum service hours are. I think it might be 90, if I'm not That's, mistaken. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, let's see, A-plus is only good for community colleges. Uh, A-plus sign up early. Um, I only just realized A-plus might be useful, but I'm a senior. Is that too late? Check with your A-plus coordinator at your high school. There might still yes, be time. Yes. Um, let's see, how long does it take to finish two dual credit classes in the summer? Um, at East Central, our summer session's eight weeks. How about you guys? Eight weeks. Yep. We do have some four weeks, but eight, four weeks. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, the summer before for your college. Yes. Um, so if you take college credits at one of the three institutions here, any community college, those will go with you to your four-year school. Um, just make sure I would say that they're Core 42 classes. So English, math, history, stick with those. And you can transfer to any public institution in the state. Okay. I think we got through it. I think our I think facilitator the, might have something to say for the last minute or two. Was there a, there was, I saw a scholarship question come through and yes, you can use scholarships on top of your A plus. Um, Ooh, yeah. McKinsey mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. we do have stackable scholarships at different schools. So A plus covers tuition and fees, but then you have this bill for books, apply for scholarships, apply, apply, apply for all scholarships to help pay for books and extra cost. Yep. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> Awesome. That all sounds so great. Thank you all for that information. So thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at moacac.org. 
In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other sessions recordings at moacac.org. Thank you.